gaming friends from around the world. Welcome to the very first episode of Controllers Up, Cards Down, the all-star gaming podcast. Uh, I am your host, Scott Crawford, coming to you from Swartz Creek, Michigan. And joining me tonight is two other lovely co-hosts, but I will start with the one that is just underneath me at the moment in my house. Tim. What? I'm, oh. I'm glad he's specified in his house, aren't you, Tim? <laughs> yeah, that's a little creepy. No, you're right up there. It's kind of weird. <laughs> and then with me, with uh, the lovely voice that you have been hearing, is my other co-host from my of the from the Friday Nightmares podcast, Miss Heather Powell, coming to you from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I won't go in with Waterdown right away. I'll go in with Hamilton right away for our American listeners, so maybe they'll know where that is. They will. I live. <laughs> they won't. I live about two and a half hours outside of Detroit on the Canadian side, and perhaps if you're more familiar with Buffalo, New York, I am about forty-five minutes to an hour away from there. So not far from the American border um, is where I reside, and I'm happy to be here today, Scotty. Yeah, I'm happy you guys are deciding to do this with me because this was just kind of a something I've been wanting to do for a while because I am a video game nerd though it's been a while well i should say just gaming nerd in general yeah. it's been a while since i played some video games but uh yeah we just kind of wanted to start a new podcast where it was uh it's going to be once a month show where we pretty much just talk about uh all things gaming from card games to board games to tabletop games to video games you name it we'll talk about it and we're hoping to have a rotating guest on each different episode so we can bring in some different perspectives and different hobbies and whatnot. Um, Absolutely. And it's exciting because you two, Tim and Scott, so Tim and Scott are very lifelong friends and both of them play a variety of computer games, system games, as well as they are both magic players. And I don't mean magic like David Copperfield magic. No, but that'd be cool, right? <laughs> I mean magic. What is it? Mag is it called Magic the Game? What is Magic the, the Gathering? The Gathering. So yeah, they'll yeah. be sharing stuff on that as well. So hopefully we'll get some D and D players on here eventually, and Settlers oh, yeah. of Catan and all those other games. There is if you can play it, you can talk about it here on this show. So yep. why don't we break into some introductions? Why don't we let Tim go first? Or hey. is Tim is Tim ready to go? Well, I'm sure. I mean. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, hi, I'm Tim. Uh, this is my second time in a podcast. I did a podcast with Scott, actually, before. Sure uh, we did. were the podcast by the cemetery. That was a lot of fun for me. I didn't know anything about the movies we were doing stuff on. This is going to be a lot more comfortable for me because, like Heather was saying, I'm a gamer been playing games you know my whole life i'm i'm oldish now don't want to <laughs> date myself too much but uh my first gaming console was the atari 2600 so that does date you though right yeah i know right <laughs> i remember playing like uh like pac-man and the really really bad ghostbusters game on that nice. uh, but the big thing that really set me into being a gamer was the nintendo entertainment system and i yeah. i was just a little kid and that, that christmas was the best christmas at least you know until a couple of years later when I wanted, you know, the next best gaming system. So what but, was your step up from that one? Uh, so I went from the Nintendo to the Genesis, mm -hmm. which the Genesis was pretty badass. Uh, oh boy. Then the Genesis got stolen, uh, oh. which was a terrible ordeal. Uh, so Super Nintendo replaced the Genesis after that. Uh, and then the logical chain progression here, let's see, uh, PlayStation, uh then from the playstation i had a sega saturn for a little bit don't want to forget that wow. saturn boys out there those are those are some fun consoles uh and i've been a pc gamer for almost since the beginning had an old gw basic tandy machine back in the day playing like oregon trail or oh my God, oregon trail yeah Fuck yeah we should talk about oregon trail oh we could more. do a whole episode on oregon oh, trail we totally could great game great yeah. game <laughs> did you play the original doom i just remember all the boys in school loving doom had it on a floppy disk yep nice a floppy disk oh, oh my god yeah. we're taking ourselves even more <laughs> That was like the first game I think I ever played online. And it was really hard to do back then because it was like all dial up modems and all oh, make oh, yeah. yeah. Your mom You're old. Hey, phone. everybody. Mom, get off the phone. I'm playing Doom. <laughs> right. Trying to. 
Oh yeah. So got got heavy into have... MMOs for a while. Oh. Played a lot of World of Warcraft, that sort of stuff back when it first came out. I'm afraid to touch that again because that game is kind of very addicting. It's like you know video game crack. So I don't yep. know if I want to go there. Uh, now I have a pretty hefty gaming PC that I play most of my games on. Uh, but we have a PlayStation and an Xbox in the house. Scott would let me. Which use version them. do you have in the house? Which uh, I guess which uh, what is it version or version or what? Yeah, what we're have? not we're not fortunate enough to have the PS5 yet. I know if you guys are watching this in the future and PS5s are available, lucky you. <laughs> right. right now they're not. So <laughs> they're not in Canada in in America because my buddy just bought one two weeks Ooh. ago there there's a few but yeah. there there's definitely hard to get they are hard to come by right now though for sure um and what about you scotty what's your history oh boy with Where's video this? games scotty yeah video oh. games yeah. oh oh, oh, yeah. oh i was gonna say yeah. well back in the 1600s <laughs> put, put a restriction on them or we'll be here all night <laughs> right <laughs> but uh yeah i first uh got into gaming um uh, when i was very 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 young um uh, my grandmother had an in television and so I grew up playing Burger Time and the old first person D&D games that were like absolutely impossible to like understand and play. Um, and then moved up from a from that to an Atari 2600. Then I ended up being lucky and winning a NES during a raffle at uh, this event my stepfather played uh, his, his band played at. Like, so I went there and had one of those little raffle tickets and I ended up winning a Nintendo and I was like, came home and that's pretty much when true video gaming for me happened and i like tim i upgraded from the nintendo to the genesis and then i upgraded my genesis to have the sega cd with it oh i never got that those are oh cool. it was snap, so much snap, fun snap. and you know CDs. back when cds were first the thing it's like <gasps> wow mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite games on that was eternal champion cd because i just loved like Fade to, like because Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat was like one of my favorite fighting games. So the step up from that was Eternal Champions at the day, and that game was addicting as shit. Um, and then after that, I ended up selling that system and all of its games, and was able to afford the first PlayStation. And I, uh, I also had in my house because my stepbrother, whatever system I bought, my stepbrother would buy the opposite. So that way nice. we would have something different to play. So I've pretty much played the SNES, everything else, go leading up PlayStation uh, N64. Um, then I upgraded to a PlayStation 2 and then got myself an original Xbox. I ended up, uh, if the FBI is listening, get me, keep, <laughs> keep quiet. But I ended up modding my Xbox and oh, was able to have like rebel. a whole freaking list of all sorts of games and emulators on that. And that was like my what I ended up calling my community system. Cause after a while I would just loan it to friends and it'd be gone for a year or two. And then it'd come back to my house and I'd loan it to another friend. It'd come back for another year. <laughs> yeah. I like, remember playing on that thing a lot when we were younger. Oh yeah. Tells you lot. how long these guys go back, huh? They're <laughs> right. going old school with these two. Uh, and then after that, I ended up buying into the Xbox 360, played that for several years and then eventually got myself a PlayStation three. And then upgraded from all of that to a PlayStation 4 and now I upgraded that to a PlayStation 4 Pro and uh recently got into uh PC gaming thanks to Tim he helped me build a console or uh, a system and uh <laughs> I also am a big as Heather said big Magic the Gathering nerd I've been I'll even she jokes about it because I've joked about it with her but I tried going pro playing Magic, would play like every big tournament and all that stuff, realized it was too expensive to keep up with the newest cards and whatnot. So I decided, screw it, just going to play casually. Um, I've also played Warhammer 40K, Warhammer Fantasy with the tabletop miniatures. Yeah, we played that together. Yeah, I was saying I've, yeah, multiple different uh, board games and card games. Uh, you name it, I've 90% chance that I've played it. Like I... I am all about just like gaming in general, any, any shape and form. And Tim, you play magic as well, right? Sure do. Yeah. Uh, not like Scott, I'm not pro. <laughs> uh, Are you a beginner, Tim? <laughs> well, no, uh, I, I understand the gaming concepts pretty well. I played back in high school and then stopped because I got out of high school and just did other things. But uh, recently got back into it just to play with Scott, actually him and his play group invited me over. So Bought a few cards, play a little bit. 
uh same story with like D and that kind of stuff i've played a little yeah. bit here and there pathfinder um those types of tabletop games but uh yeah yeah lots of lots of i'm willing to try just about anything i mean yes. heck even like card games like heck, i don't know do you guys have euchre in canada is that oh, a yeah. thing over I there i played euchre for sure that's like every yeah. cottage game that you play is you learn how to play euchre that's how yeah. you survive cottage trips or what do you guys call them in the up just going up to the up what are they going called up, cabins? going up north cabins, you gotta yeah. go into the camp or going camp, to cabins, going yeah. to the camp that's yeah. right that's how you survive going to the camp Oh yeah. Gotta, gotta have something to pass the time. Cards are always a good way to do that. Uh, and like, I'm, a, I'm kind of into history of things. So I like older games too. Like just like the way things people used to play games like Yahtzee is like a really cool historic yeah. game, like the basis and dice and stuff like that. So that's yeah, how awesome. about you, Heather? Oh, well, I don't play any games. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. So as a female and an only child, I got into video games at a young age. So just like Tim, I believe it was Christmas where I opened my first Nintendo and it had Duck Hunt. Nice. And I remember oh, yeah. taking out the red gun and feeling the power in my hands and then <laughs> feeling the anger of that damn dog that just yes, kept yep. laughing at me and humiliating me. <laughs> and you so couldn't then, shoot him. And you couldn't shoot him. I remember I would try, right? And <laughs> myself and my girlfriend would take, tr- take uh, turns playing. So anyway, eventually I got all the Super Mario Brothers and Tetris, which I got pretty far with Tetris, let me say. But, you know, still in life, when things get like stressful, I think of the Tetris music, you know, when the blocks are building up and you're oh, like, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> And I also got Game Genie. That tells you how sorry nice. I was. I forgot all about the Game Genie. Right? Yeah, that's the, the early cheaters. The early cheaters. And it was the best because you would it came in a book, right? You would get this thick book and you would stick your Game Genie on, put it in the system. And I remember I would always get Infinity Lives. I was like, son of a bitch, Infinity Lives. I'm going to beat Super Mario Brothers 3 no matter what. And I can say I bet I beat every single Super Mario Brothers. Nice. Even three on that system. Um, and my dad and I used to play this game called Super Spike Volleyball. And we eventually got up to the competitive level. And the graphics, mm. you know, at the time, I'm sure you guys were the same. You just loved it, right? It was just oh, yeah. such an interactive thing you could do. Now, being a female, um, it does put you in a little bit of a different category playing video games. So I used to go to arcades, which I'm sure you gentlemen went to arcades yes. as well. Every now and, and then. Every now and then. So I'm sure you remember when the Mortal Kombat games got Oh, played, hell yeah. Right? So you try being a, a female, pushing your way up to play that game it was hell because boys at that stage weren't really digging girls yet they were more like (laughs) who invited the chick to the party so it was very challenging to get in and kind of fight my way up but i did play mortal Kombat. my first boyfriend in grade six had his own mortal Kombat arcade game that's awesome that's kind (laughs) of why we dated because we would spend hours (laughs) at a time playing mortal Kombat. Um, from so Nintendo, I just went to Sega and I played Sonic, uh, Street Fighter Two, which I beat. Nice. Uh, Echo the Dolphin. Yes. You oh, Echo the Dolphin? oh, I loved Echo Fucking the Echo. Dolphin. I hated Echo the Dolphin. <laughs> I couldn't get past a certain level. Did you guys ever beat that game? No, no, no too hard. <sighs> See, if anyone has bit, beat Echo the Dolphin, we want you to come on this show and tell you tell us how you did it because that game was fucking difficult. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, the only the first game I ever beat growing up was Final Fantasy VII. Oh, nice. That's probably pretty hard, though. It was like, but it was a lot more just time consuming than it was hard. OK, cool, cool. Um, and then at that point, I didn't spend my money on video game systems just because I was spending my money on other things. But that didn't mean I stopped playing. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend had an N64 and we would have epic Mario Kart battles and Goldeneye. Like that oh, was yeah. shit. We would Golden stay up like four in the morning playing Mario Kart. And to the point where we're thinking of setting it up on my TV downstairs and having a Mario Kart tournament. And I don't mind saying how old I am. I'm 38 years old and we're probably going to get this stuff done in the next couple of weeks. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. There we go. So, and now I do own an Xbox. Oh my God. I can't remember what version it is, but I do have a PlayStation 4, um, which I use more. I use the PlayStation 4 more because yep. I do Guitar Hero is what I'm I'm kind of jamming on right now is my <laughs> It's my yep. game of choice. And I just I know got back Xbox. into playing. So it's the Xbox is somebody else's. That's why I don't know. So the PlayStation 4 is the one that I play the most. And um, Guitar Hero is where it's at for me. But I also like Gran Turismo, um, one of my favorite racing games. All the nice. versions. Um, 
I did get pretty far in Gran Turismo 4, and I'm a big fan of Grand Theft Auto. I yes. always uh, I always enjoyed playing that game as well. Yeah, that's uh, I've never been a big racing fan unless there's like customized like well, like it was well, more customization is fun, right? Yeah. Um, and that's I used to drive an Echo, so Tim probably knows what that is—a Toyota Echo. Yeah, so it's a cute Gran- little car. It's a cute little car. So in Gran Turismo Four, when I was dating a guy that a lot of guys I dated, we ended up playing a lot of video games, um, just because I liked it and they liked it, and it was something to do together. And I had a souped-up Echo. I I nice. actually. <laughs> It didn't go, it wasn't like, it didn't win a lot, let me tell you that. But it was still fucking sick on how it looked. It was a really, really awesome, uh, fun game. I have played d and I'm not the best of it. I get super confused and I get super <laughs> bored. So I look there's, forward to hearing other people talk yeah. about it. Yeah, so, there's a lot to it. I, right? I got a drink. I like to drink when I play D&D. So I usually try to incorporate it into a character that has a little bit of a drinking problem. So it See? covers up. That's a little bit more fun, right? And tabletop games as well. Like I enjoy games like Card Against Humanity. I enjoy playing old school uh, board games like Mousetrap and Clue and 13 Den and Drive. God, Mousetrap. Oh, I know it's a bitch to set up, right? Yeah. You spend like five hours. No, and like (laughs) the traps never go the way you want them to. Uh, So I'm really excited to talk more about games. I do a lot of interactive quiz games with my friends through PlayStation 4 right now because that's a way to kind of keep in contact. Uh, But yeah, definitely racing games, fighting games, some first person shooters. It really depends on the game. But fighting games and racing games and wrestling. I've done a lot of wrestling games, all the different WWE additions I've played as well, because I'm a big wrestling fan. So I'm very much, it's funny, I had a, a buddy over the other night and we were talking about stuff. He's like, you know, Heather, you kind of are a Tom girl, which is such like not a term to use now in 2021. Um, I like to think of it as I just have a variety of different tastes yeah. and I enjoy lots of different things. So yeah, that's you're why human. I'm happy. I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm human. Um, so <laughs> that's why I'm super happy to be on this podcast. And there was something particularly very near and dear to my heart that I wanted to bring to this podcast that we'll get into in a little bit that is Um, true but no and pc games are not really for me except for oregon trail and world in the world is uh, carmen san diego we're definitely my uh my pc gaming level that exists so (laughs) yeah and i say i guess i could bring up like the types of games i do like to play since you brought it up too like but yeah for me it would be i got a cat butt on the screen all right there you go (laughs) um but uh i am a big a uh, fan of like a lot of single player games lately. I used to be mm. big into like MMOs and online shooters and stuff like that. But yeah, nowadays I like very heavy story driven games. So it could be RPG or action. As long as there's some type of RPG elements to the game, I'm usually addicted to it because almost every game has an aspect to that of that now. And um, but yeah, there's even like I pretty much just dabble in everything like the Only thing that I don't really play is football games, but that's just because it confuses me when I'm trying to actually play the game. I find sports games exhausting. Yes. I enjoy (laughs) watching sports, but I find playing them, there's just, and we'll talk about that with our other Well, yeah, because sports are a game too, right? They are, and there's just so many different movements that you need to do. I prefer fighting because once you figure out the codes or yes. the buttons, you're mm-hmm. set, right? Yeah. Like, you, you know the exactly what moves going, like in exactly. Killer Instinct, and you just. And it's more repetitive, <laughs> right? And I think there is something that people sometimes really enjoy more of those complicated storyline build on each other games, which I think you are into, Scott. I think you like a lot of that kind of. Yeah, I like a lot of. Right? Yeah, like where, because video games now especially tell, can tell amazing stories. Yeah. Like there are like things that I pretty much I could I would say even outdo some movies and like television series just because of like how much is put into them. But you're also, you know, it's it's way more interactive because you are that character in that world. Like, so I think there's just that level to it that makes it even better. So just to touch on this briefly, only because Scott and I have met in person. Actually, I have met Tim and Scott in person. That's so right. Yeah. Way back. We're real people. We're real people. <laughs> and it's only due to that dreaded COVID-19 that has closed the border between us that we haven't seen each other in over a year. Uh, but Scott and I, when we did get together, we went to two different arcades. Yes, we did. And we played some pretty epic games. We played House of the Dead, I think it was. And we played a Jurassic World game. Yep. Um, and then we played that really shitty 
shitty game. What was that ridiculous game that we played at that ghetto God. arcade by you? It was like the worst. Honestly, Tim, we should have taken you because these graphics cool. were like from 1989. It was like you went back in time and it was so bad. It was some kind of like fighter game. Anyway, yeah, was like, Scott will think of it later. Yeah, I was trying to think. I don't know the name of it, but I'm thinking it had like to do with like an alien invasion of like bugs and stuff like that. Was oh, it it's ridiculous. an old game? Or yeah, it was an old okay. game. Like now the, the arcade that we went to, which is in the bigger mall, why don't you say where that was? And maybe Tim's more familiar with that one. All right. So yeah, the one that we went to like the last time you were here was uh, Great Lakes Crossing's uh, arcade oh, that they have. That's a big mall. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we we spent probably a good two hours in there, and we were playing air hockey and all sorts of shit, which was just a blast. And like, yeah, a lot of a lot of fun arcade games and and a lot of good racing games. We did some yes. motorcycle race games and stuff like that. And I love the arcade for that reason. I actually had my thirtieth birthday party at um, at Dave and Buster's here in Canada, oh, and go. it was epic. And I've been to Palladium multiple times. Me and my friends used to go to Palladium all the time in our twenties, which is basically. Um, it was originally owned by Sega, but then eventually just got bought out and it was all different video games. And there was a bar. So you would like David Buster's, right? You drink and play video games. Like it was yeah. just the bar. They go hand in hand. Oh, they go by <laughs> that. When we can get together again, gentlemen, we will definitely be going to David Buster's for a night. Oh, yeah, I am down. Tim yeah, might come. We let's try to get him to go. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. We'll see. What, we'll see if he's <laughs> no, busy that day. We'll see. I'm always busy. <laughs> he's always busy. He's a popular man. Um, but yeah, so like arcade games as well, too. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're interested in anything we've talked about or we've missed it out and you want to come on and talk about it, please feel free to. Yes. Reach out to us because, uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to do rotating guests on the show so like yeah if you want to come on anytime like even if it's talk like Cards Against Humanity or just like Monopoly or just any type of game like we're welcome it's just like this is just a gaming podcast in general and yep like if, it'd be nice to be able to get other people's perspectives for what they play and their hobbies and bring them on and we can just discuss it and have a lot of fun too it's just yep this yeah. is just going to be kind of just a grab bag of all sorts of entertainment from the gaming community it's going to be fun games are fun that's very yeah. fun so i guess we should move into the news scott well yes i'll say actually before we do that oh, I guess never we mind. should I guess we should kind of break down the format of how our show is going to be. Okay, Scott, or we can do that. <laughs> yeah, way to give so, out the secret. Way to go, Scott. <laughs> yeah, so Heather already spoiled it, but uh, we're uh, <laughs> our first segment of our show is, will always be uh, like news and video game, uh, like video games that are releasing in the next month, and I'll be adding board games and stuff like that as I look further into it more. Um, and then our second segment, Heather, what will that be? That will be us talking about a long running uh, game show in Toronto, Ontario, Canada called Video and Arcade Top 10. Uh, this show ran from 1991 to 2006 and it included all major systems and it was a huge hit across Canada. Uh, these two gentlemen had never heard, it in, heard of it till they were exposed to an episode from 1997 today. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty cool. Actually. <laughs> right? um, it was, but it's, it it's was like a ball. show about gaming. It's not like that actual, well, I guess there was like a contest in it, but like, yeah, they do play games games but it's yeah. it's shortened right but yeah. anyway we'll we'll be talking about an episode about that each episode it was pretty and, funny actually uh, yeah it's pretty funny it's pretty <laughs> retro which is why we thought it'd be fun to include it let's go back to when like really gaming systems were just climbing up in popularity like yeah you know and this show was really used to promote different games and that's why it went on for so long and the prizes were pretty intense like i don't know if you guys are watching but there was yep. a lot of stuff you could win so uh it was a great marketing tool for a lot of these video game companies so we'll be yep. talking about an episode and sharing it in our in our note in our notes and probably on our page so people can watch it as well yeah absolutely and yeah and then the third segment will be just kind of us discussing like discussing and kind of reviewing a or a uh first impressions type review of a video game board game any type of game that we have played and so yeah we'll be so it's just gonna be kind of a three-act structure but uh yeah i guess since we got that out of the way we can kind of jump into news and gaming releases um so i only got two news pieces that i thought were like interesting and caught my eye um one of them was uh a new PlayStation VR is coming out for the PS5 with a new controller that is similar to the DualShock on the PS5. Oh, so cool. Apparently, it's going to like it's still going to be wired, but it's going to be less wires for the headset. Um, there isn't much more information than that right now, so I don't think it'll be coming out this year. I think it'll probably be more like 2022, 2023. Well, VR is going to be huge, though. I mean, I can't, I can't blame them for wanting to get back in on that. The PlayStation VR, the first one's been like the biggest selling VR headset to date. 
Yeah. And it'd be great to kind of have like a new upgraded version for the new systems that are out. Oh yeah. Yeah. VR has come a long way in the past couple of years. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. Have you really done much with VR Heather? No, like besides when I go to like Dave and Buster's and big events like that, like when I have done VR there, it's incredible. I went into a VR VR roller coaster experience Ooh, cool. and it was intense. <laughs> like I actually kind of felt like I was on a roller coaster, which is pretty awesome that VR can make that capability come true, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll oh. say it's getting to that point at home. Like uh, it's like it's definitely like the stuff of the arcades is I think a little more because it just kind of like that's all they focus on. Yeah. But like the at home experience. I, I never played at home, but I did go um, to Best Buy here in Flint and tested one of the VR headsets. Just uh, they have someone there to show you around. You can pick a game and stuff. And there was a rock climbing one because I was like, well, I want to pick something that's going to be intense as uh, like that. I want to feel like I'm actually in. And as you guys both know, I'm afraid of heights. So doing this, I'm looking down and like just seeing the water and everything below me. I'm going, oh fuck! <laughs> like my Did you heart kind of was... become disconnected. Like you didn't feel as if you were like hey, actually in the VR. Like, did you feel like? Yeah, you were I felt like I was a little bit. Game. Yeah, like because I was actually like losing my balance a little bit and like yeah, it'll mess a with bit that. of vertigo. <laughs> Probably the coolest VR experience I had is I went to Universal Studios and there's a Harry Potter ride, and it goes between VR and real time, and it, you're just basically sitting in this thing and it flips you around and one minute you're looking at a screen and it feels really realistic and then all of a sudden uh, a ghost or a whatever they're called the, the phantom things come in actually at your face like a real one comes out nice. of the right so it's it's kind of blending that reality and that vr together which is so smart like vr you can do so much with it and people can experience things that they may be uncomfortable experiencing right exactly. it's a safe environment to do it and it's clever yeah you're yeah, you see owned a lot a of that in the future, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you owned a VR headset for a little while, didn't you, Tim? I've owned a couple of them, actually. I got one of the uh, Oculus Rifts back when they were developing it. I, so I had the second stage of their developer's kit. Uh, and then I also owned a HP Reverb, which was a, a Windows Media headset that came out a little bit ago. Uh, I liked them both a lot, but not enough to justify the price tags at the time. Mm. But now, now you can get a quality VR headset for like, 300 bucks with the oculus quest 2 there it's it's i almost kind of want to buy another one because they're pretty cool <laughs> well that's yeah. a reasonable price too to be honest with you like yeah, that, yeah. it's getting affordable right? it's getting yeah. affordable now does that come with like a variety of games how does that work are they all digital that you're ordering it, yeah you put the headset on and like you're in like a virtual world that has like the store and you can buy stuff and cool. uh everything's linked to facebook which is a little strange if you think about yeah, it but then yeah. facebook owns it so kind of makes sense uh but yeah. they're cool yeah everything's self-contained it's like a it's like its own version of a console because there's no other things you need to hook it up to but you can hook it up to a pc if you want to yeah and that's freaking cool and like uh that, that's the one thing I, I never did get like a psvr like i don't think i would be able to be able to ever experience it but they uh was it resident evil 7 would allowed you to go first person with the vr headset and i'm going oh hell no i would i can't do that because that's that game is way too frightening like without being like completely immersed in it like that like yeah, I, vr could scare the heck out of you yeah <laughs> they probably have warnings on it right like oh they do if you have a heart condition consult your doctor if you have high blood pressure and all yeah, that yeah. other stuff right and that is one thing I think everybody will learn about me too. Cause you know, most people that might know us and listen to us on uh, the Friday nightmares podcast. know obviously we're huge horror fans. I am a freaking chicken when it comes to horror video games. I really, yeah. Like my heart is racing. I'm like sweating. And like, I think it's cause I get so immersed like <laughs> into it and like, I'm actually there and there's just like, and video games tend to love to do jump scares a lot more than anything and yeah. so my heart's even racing even more and yeah like i i'm a chicken when i come to those games i'm like going, oh jesus oh christ oh no yeah i don't like being scared in games either and I, I like i like feeling in a game like at least at the very least i have some level of control so if there's a game where i'm like being chased by something or whatever i don't like it. nope <laughs> yeah not your jam not your jam 
Though but I will always it. dabble them. Yeah, I say I'll, I'll always dabble in them, but I, I'm a, I always start freaking the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I guess, kind of fun. Well, ways. and the point of the game, right? If it's that realistic and, and that's what the programmer was looking for, yeah, then they've done their the job, right? Then. Yeah, yeah absolutely, <laughs> right? Like, they've done what they were looking to do, so that's awesome. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what uh, the what more we'll hear about the PS5, PSVR for PlayStation 5 when when that gets more development news out there. But yeah, it was just like a tweet from one of the heads of the of PlayStation that brought, like, they also garnered a lot of attention. So I was like, all right, got to talk about that at least. Um, the next piece is uh, Vampires, the Masquerade, Bloodlines 2 has been delayed due to replacement of the entire development team. Oh, Uh-oh. man. Yeah. You want to be a fly on the wall for that meeting. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think we're going to be expecting that because this game was supposed to come out this year. That's not happening now. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Luckily, That's... I'm sure there's lots of people looking for work, so they'll probably have no problems finding people. But oh my goodness! Yeah, something bad yeah. happened yeah. there. Yeah, I'm, like I didn't look into the. I don't think there was many details leaked out about it. But all I know is, yep, the entire team got scrapped, and they're building the game back from the ground up now. It's like, oh, oh, boy. oh my goodness, That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, wow. I've never heard that happening to a whole entire development team before. I'm just like, oh crap. Yeah, wow. the first one of those is a long time ago too uh, really popular game though yeah i was saying i was excited for this one because i'm like yeah vampires the Mas- masquerade like D for vampires and video yeah. game form hell yes <laughs> <laughs> like all my that's all my jam right there Checks um, a lot of boxes it does um but then yeah that was pretty much the only bit of news that i brought um but before i jump into any of the releases uh did we want to talk about like the disc versus discless thing that uh yeah, I wanted to share my, so I have a friend that's recently purchased um, a PlayStation 5, and I want to get, to get this right, Xbox Series, Series yep. X? Yep, Series so most, S or X, depending yeah, on so, if you went digital or not. So he went digital. Um, so that's same Series with the, S. So the same with the PlayStation 5, he went digital as well. And I thought that was a really interesting choice. And so I've known him a very long time, like over 20 years. He's had every system you can think of. And traditionally, he's had um, hard hard media, so hard copy of, of this, right? So he's done the whole trade-in, buy and trade. You get new games when they come out, pre-order, all that jazz. And he switched to digital. And I said, why? He's like, well, I don't really need to go pick it up at the store i can just order it online play it and that's fine i don't need to have a copy and i just wondered are we moving away from that oh yeah there's a big there's a big market (laughs) for buy and sell games like we have several i'm sure like you guys do um independent buyers that will do it online through you know facebook market but as well as like eb games is a big game shop for us here in canada as well as the beat goes on they resell video games as well and i have always gone in to buy games physical games and maybe that's not going to be a thing or will it still be a thing will it be like how some people like to collect dvds so maybe uh i i don't see it being mainstream much anymore they've made it so easy to just download games uh you can have them so quick you don't have to go to the store uh, and for the most part cd technology is kind of old like even even a blu-ray player it's clunky old technology like a, a hard drive a solid state hard drive like they got in these new consoles is so fast what do you yeah. think scotty uh, i'm i'm kind of the same way like it, it that is the future um the thing is though i don't see the physical copies going away for a while still because there will still be the ones that want to hold on to physical copies because you know there is that feeling of holding something that you bought in your hands and being like this is mine Mm -hmm. where a lot of the worry in the industry is people like well i buy this game now but will i own it several years from now and like or will it get taken off the store and all of a sudden i can't play it anymore that's a true fear too yeah yeah yeah. happen and i'm um, sorry go ahead scott i didn't mean to one thing I will say uh, that, like right now, at least on the PlayStation and Xbox, like uh, there's a game that you can't get digitally anymore, and that is Cyberpunk 2077 because of everything that has happened. Yeah, there's they been a lot of it, issues with that game, right? And they pulled it from the stores. So I, I luckily bought the physical edition of it. So I, because I just wanted to grab it at the store while I was, because I, if it's a game, I'm going to be like, uh, like when I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to invest hundreds of hours into this, then I'll usually buy a copy of it. Or if so I see why a, is that? Why would you buy it? Because you're going to invest more time. Is it? Is it because you want the physical, 
and I'm you just gonna... want it in your hand and it feels good because we're trained for that, right? Like yeah. our generation <laughs> grew up with Nintendo. You were you were sticking the game genie in and you were shoving it in Nintendo. You were doing the whole blow test to clean out the dust. Yep. Yeah. Nothing, but we thought it did. Um, so it's interesting, right? That you you, you kind of gave an argument for digital, but then you're like, but if I'm going to play it a lot, I want hard. I want a hard copy, right? So I just yeah. think it's interesting. I'm not, you know, criticizing. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, because I'm a, yeah, because I'm kind of like one that has physical and a lot of digital library for my games. Like I, especially when like whenever PlayStation would have their sales on their PlayStation store, I would be like, Oh, I probably wouldn't have bought this game normally, but it's only 15 bucks. Screw it. I'll spend 15 bucks and get this game and see what it's like. And then I'd get it digitally. It's like, yeah. So I think it's games like that where it's like, okay, I see it's on sale. Yeah, I'll spend like 15 bucks on it because you never know. I'll test it out and see. And like, what did I lose? I just tried a new game. Oh, well. Yeah. So I, it's yeah. kind of weird. Like I, I, if I, I'm not sure if I get the chance whenever I'm lucky enough to actually find a PS5 in stores. If I will go the discless or disc route, I'll I'll wait and see on that and make my decision probably on the spot. It's interesting, right? So I bought an Xbox for someone I was dating years ago, an Xbox One, and I bought them games as well. And you know, still I bought video games because I've dated a lot of guys that play video games. And there's something about going to EB Games for us here in Canada and knowing the system that you're shopping for, looking at the games. Like, and I would flip them over. I would kind of look at the cover. And I would mm-hmm. flip it over and I would read it. I'd be like, okay, what kind of first person shooter is this? What kind of race game is it? What kind of options are there? What kind of cars do they have? What kind of tracks do they have? You know, are is the person I'm buying this for going to like it? If I just went online and ordered something off digital, or I was like, here's a gift card, order your own game. I guess like that's fine. But there's a there's something fun about going to the store and picking something out. Yep. And right? also buying physically does help these uh, brick and mortar stores sure yeah because yeah like like look at what look at the struggles the game stops going through right now because a lot of people are moving towards the digital digital age and they're having a hard time staying relevant because of it so like yeah like i guess it really depends on like how much you want to support like going to a store if it actually works for you or not nowadays but like it just but yeah like say a game's releasing tomorrow for us at midnight here i could hit uh, pre-download and it would download the game and that midnight ready to play. Yeah, and well, and as a PC player, like we've had no media to speak of for years now. Yeah, like, you can't go to anywhere point. and buy a PC game on a disc. But is uh, that different? Is that different than console game buying? Like, I'm just asking. I'm I'm no by any stance overly passionate about one or the other. Besides the gift giving piece, um, yeah. my friend's son, I bought him a gift card for EB Games for Christmas and. He's so excited because stores here are finally open. So he can go in and he can pick his game and he can, and he's like 11, right? Like everything's digital for him, but you know, he's, it's the first time he's had his own gift card and he can go there and pick what he wants. So I just wonder, like, even with the younger generation, is that going to be something that's going to stick with it? Or is he going to turn 16 and be like, screw this shit. I can just order it (laughs) online. Right. He might. Yeah. Who knows? 16 is a big that's a big difference it's a big difference between (laughs) that and 11 right like there's a huge other side that comes with it um and the last thing i wanted to add to this is that you know of course quarantine happened for us here in ontario and there wasn't a lot to do so we had a copy of guitar hero and i searched through i'm going to tell you guys now 20 resale game shops to find a guitar for playstation 4 i called 20 within so i live in hamilton ontario i called within i guess work in miles so i'll try to do this in miles i worked within a 60 to 70 mile race radius of where i was willing to drive (laughs) get a playstation 4 guitar i got one for 60 dollars within two miles from my house I was, there was one that was available about 40 miles from my house. And for all my Canadian friends, that would have been North York. And they wanted something like $170. And I was like, I don't think so. I got like, I don't have 20 year old live at home money. I got 30 year old have a mortgage money. So (laughs) that is (laughs) happening. But they were selling like hotcakes. They said to me, we can't keep them in because everyone's home right now and guitar heroes and you know rock band even though they're not being made anymore they're games that we played in our 20s 
we don't have children, but a lot of people do. It's games you can play with your kids. Yeah, yeah. It's it like the one, sense. right? It's the one thing you can play. Like maybe a parent doesn't want to throw on, I don't know, God, Grand Theft Auto. So they throw on Guitar Hero and it's a much better game for people to play. So it was just interesting that like, and that you need the physical game for. Like, yeah. right? So it's it's fascinating. It will be cool to see where things go in the next five, 10 years with digital versus, uh, you know, physical media, um, especially Thanks. in the video game world. Yeah, because yeah, I've listened to a lot of video game podcasts over the years, and that has been like a this has been like a big topic of discussion for several years. I'm like, where is it all gonna go? Yeah. yeah. Same thing with movies. I'm sure you guys experience that every oh, now yeah. and then. Everybody says media is dead, but there is always gonna need to be some form of physical media because there's gonna be the retail giants and all these places that will demand to have a product to sell. I mean, we can't yeah. just sell gift cards. Yeah, all these right, stores exactly. are gonna turn into gift card stores. It's gonna be weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that just, that just won't work. Um, yeah, really. But yeah, one. but yeah, that is definitely like something interesting that I've always been curious about as well. And like, uh, there'll probably be another topic I already have for uh, episode two playing in my head. So I'm going to be working on the kinks to that before we uh, talk about it on our next episode. But it'll be fun. And on our page, uh, we will have a Facebook page. If you want to share your thoughts, you know, are you pro? physical media are you pro digital are you kind of you got your foot in both camps right now you know where do you stand on the whole issue it'd be interesting to see what people are saying right oh and i want to just uh clarify something too because there might be people out there going heather you paid 60 dollars for a guitar for guitar Hero? oh yeah canadian this canadian yeah. money so it's fake money it's not real yeah so that would be like five dollars american yeah. I'm that'd kidding. be like it'd probably be more like 45 um yeah probably 45 would be accurate right and you know it's it's resell right and also if it's quarantine and people are desperate and i'm calling 20 different shops to try to get a guitar for guitar hero that tells you that they can mark it up to whatever they want so the dude yeah. that marked is up to 175 dollars. it was one of those like real special aerosmith ones that came with the aerosmith game oh. <laughs> and, and i was still like dude i'm not 16 this is not happening like <laughs> not spending that kind of money on this um but yes yeah, yeah. so it is we should clarify that it is in canadian dollars it's a good just in case someone's just like wait a minute you paid that much you're crazy <laughs> she got ripped off but yeah no <laughs> i probably did a little bit but you know quarantine you know, we do desperate things in quarantine, guys. And mm -hmm. I needed to, like, try to get some groupies and work my way towards earning more money for drugs. So I was just <laughs> doing a guitar hero. Got to make ends meet there, yeah. This is gotta true. Make, those groupies aren't cheap, Tim. I got to <laughs> do what I got to do, right? So. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to jump right into, like, a list of some games that I uh, figured would uh, were of interest for the next month come, that are coming out. Uh, I didn't go right down everything because... Dear Lord, there is a lot of games when you're looking at everything and we'd be here for a couple hours. But uh, so I just grabbed ones that kind of just like, oh, I recognize the name of that or piqued my interest. So starting off on March 2nd, we have Harvest Moon One World coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, on March 2nd as well is Yakuza Like a Dragon for PlayStation 5. And the UK, Yakuza games are just so bonkers, so I'm kind of curious about that. I've seen a trailer for it. It looks nuts. I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this one uh, is coming out for PC on March 3rd, Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, huh? which is a unique version of Tetris that I've seen. Like I've seen Puyo Puyo Tetris before, and it's very Say that like four times fast. <laughs> Puyo Puyo Tetris. Puyo Puyo Tetris. Puyo 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 Tetris. Uh, nope, can't ah. do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, also coming out to PC on March 4th is a uh, loop hero. Uh, this one, I was like, Oh, I wonder how this is going to work, but apex legends coming to Nintendo switch on March 9th. Mm -hmm. so, all right. That's a very popular game right now in the multiplayer that that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, crash bandicoot four. It's about time coming to PlayStation five, Xbox series X and S Nintendo switch all on March 12th. Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning is coming to Switch. So it's the uh, re... What do you call it? Kind of like the reimagining or reboot or whatever, but it's basically just a reskin of the old game, but I'll pretty right. it up. Hmm. Um, Samurai Showdown coming to Xbox Series X oh, on oh. March 16th, and that brought nostalgia. I'm like, what the heck? I loved Samurai Showdown back in the day. Um, Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse, the old Xbox game is 
being re- uh, brought out for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC on March 16th. Oh, geez. <laughs> that game was hilarious. Uh, Marvel's Avenger is coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S on March 18th. Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville it was, could be coming to Nintendo Switch on March 19th. Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, will be released on Xbox One and PC on March 25th. It Takes Two, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, March 26th. Monster Hunter Rise for the Nintendo Switch, uh, March 26th. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, March 26th. The remakes of the old ones? Wow. Huh, that's cool. Retro? They they came out on uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, so I bet you they're just getting updated for the new uh, generation graphics. Mm -hmm. This one, I knew, I remember Tim playing the first game, so I definitely had to add it. Evil Genius 2, World oh, yeah. Domination, coming to PC March 30th. I'm looking forward to it. And it's uh, it's a brand new game that's gonna only going to be like 30 bucks, which is crazy nice. cheap for a new release. Yeah, that is dirt cheap. And in this one, I'm just going to kind of lump them all together because they're getting released at the same time in the same series. But Kingdoms, the entire Kingdom Hearts franchise is getting released to PC on March 30th. Oh, goodness. Yeah, so that's like every single <laughs> game. And like, I, I, there's so many of them. I'm just like, yeah, I'll just lump that into one. Those but games confuse me. <laughs> I tried playing them and <laughs> the storyline just, I, my mind melts. <laughs> yeah, but they're super popular though. People love them. Oh, yeah. Disney and Final Fantasy mixed together. Yep, sure. Uh, but <laughs> right. <laughs> it makes sense, I guess. But what special that- powers does Goofy have? You find out. <laughs> <laughs> How many hit you- points does Mickey Ke- do when he hits somebody? You know. Well, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong because there are a lot of fans of the series. But I think Goofy was kind of a paladin. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds Which- about right. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that yuck. is the rule. Oh, yuck, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that is yep all the releases for. Um, the month of march and yeah i'll be doing that for april and like i said i'll be doing uh bringing in video games uh board games card games and stuff too i'll just look a little more further into it but this being our first episode just kind of wanted to get like a lot of stuff done first um so i guess uh yeah we'll take a quick break and jump into our second segment here in just a second so everyone who's still watching our video right now, as Scott and Tim go to fill their waters, um, please, as we said earlier, if you're interested in joining our podcast, reach out to us on our Facebook page. You can message the group or you can message Scott or I as well. Uh, we'd be happy to have you on and talk about whatever video games, tabletop games, um, PC games, I don't know, whatever games you want to discuss. And Scotty is back. I'm just letting people know that we are encouraging anyone who wants to be a guest on here to join us. Our format is simple. Uh, We'll probably take about an hour, just over an hour of your time. And uh, it's fun. You don't have to do a lot of prep. You just have to watch a short little uh, episode of Video in Arcade Top 10, which is fun anyway. It's a fun show that we're going to get into very shortly. And that should bring in something that you're playing and talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. And we're really looking to have people come in from different, um, different angles of different kind of games and stuff like that, that we can discuss. That would be awesome. Yep. Different walks of life, if you will. We're going to be talking about the long running Canadian uh, game show called Video and Arcade Top 10. Uh, this show ran from on YTV, which is a local channel. It was run out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada from 1991 to 2006. And it was the bomb diggity. Let me tell you, <laughs> I spent many of days rushing home to watch Video and Arcade top 10 and it was just one of those statuses that if you got on video arcade top 10 to either be a contestant so how this would work is that you could get seats to go to the show and they would randomly draw people from the audience to come up and try the game so obviously they would do the newest systems the newest games uh they would do always a little bit of a music video a little bit of a movie that was coming out and there'd be prizes galore. So watching this as an adult, I was like, wow, wow. like <laughs> they must have really like Nintendo must have got some mad purchases off of this show. Oh, yeah. We would promo this this show. And, and I guess 
I'll, you guys wouldn't know, but when they were reading letters from people that wrote in, which is so dated, right? These kids sending in postcards and stuff to be read. Oh, for show. sure. <laughs> but they were coming from all over Canada. Huge, huge. So that tells you how wide reaching the show was. So it explains why it lasted for 16 years. Because probably if you were a video game company like Nintendo or Sega or whatever, and you had your game on there, you probably made some good coin because it's free marketing. It's free advertising. Yeah. So this was your guys first time watching it so scott what was your first impression of video arcade top 10 my first impression was damn this is 90s <laughs> yes the opening is super 90s as the joysticks and then all the game stuff flashing <laughs> around it you well, guys can see it on our page but and that well that and the overhyped hosts like oh yeah, oh, yeah we're gonna do this blah 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 blah. like it was just great I and that's it. a famous radio host in canada nicholas Piccolis, and that's oh, his real really? name that's and yes awesome. he is famous in the toronto and ontario area probably across canada too um what did you think tim uh yeah i was a little shocked because like the main spokes dude was like probably in his mid to late 30s at the time <laughs> so and then, like, all the other spokespeople were like, I'm a super cool person. Listen to what <laughs> I'm saying here. Uh, it, was, it was actually pretty cool, though. All, all around entertaining. Lots of bright flashing colors and, and, and uh, musical cues, just like you would want in the 90s to, like, get you all excited. Uh, I felt like it would have had perfectly just at home with, like, some Chuck E. Cheese commercials thrown in the middle, you know? Oh, yep. yeah. You know there was, right? Yeah, um... somewhere. It was what I still like about the show to the day to this day is the high energy of it. I think they were smart. They kept it quick. They kept it going for like gamers, right? Like they were like to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. Yep, gang for the gamers and just a young audience because like young audience. Yes. Like if they start to lose interest, they'll start doing something else. So you well, just and that's who was focused. playing those N64s, right, at yeah. that time. Like, I'm sure there were adults, too, but I feel like adult gaming is something that has come with our generation because yeah. previous yeah. generations ah. didn't have that, right? They weren't playing video games. Like, my dad doesn't like, oh, man, got to pull out the Xbox. and no. Well, <laughs> though I will say, if uh, the Intellivision is busted out at my grandma's house, my Aunt Debbie will kick my ass and throw me off the couch to play Burger mm, Time. There you go, right? <laughs> so I guess it all depends what you grew up with, right? And what you're connected to. Um, so on this video arcade, so this was this came out in 1997. So it does say season three, that is correct, incorrect. This came out season seven in 1997, just before school started. Because one of my favorite parts is that their promo was a back to school party and it was a bus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, full of video N games. Full of video games, 10 <laughs> N64 systems playing Marvel. Mario Kart, you got t-shirt snacks, um, and, and it was basically them being like, we know how much you guys hate going back to school, so put, put, your, put your ballots in to win this bus to come to your house. I thought that was super cool. Um, and I, the game they played was Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey was the first game. Yeah. Did you guys <laughs> play that game? I Never. did, and I did with like some friends, but uh, when I seen <laughs> that pop up, I looked over at Tim and said, of course it's on the show. This is the yeah. most Canadian thing ever. <laughs> the Canadian <laughs> TV show talking about hockey. Right oh yeah. <laughs> like, can you get any more cheesy over the top? Like it's, uh, it's, and it's Wayne Gretzky. Like, yeah. you know, raise hands, raise down to, uh, to Wayne Gretzky. So have you played this game, Tim? I'm sorry. Did you say you played never, it? Never, never played that game. No. Uh, um, it looked like a lot of fun though. I liked how they, they took a bunch of time to explain like how hockey worked. Like, <laughs> yeah. like you're talking to Canadian kids. I'm pretty sure they already know like the difference between a slap shot and a. <laughs> it's true, but this did have American viewing, so there it was available um, on American television. Oh, um, okay. And it because it was on for 16 years, right? Like it was a great marketing tool, right? So you could get it. It just depends where you work. So you've got to remember how cable was at that time, right? That is true. It was like for us to get American stations. Sometimes you had to pay. A little bit more if you wanted right. to get those stations um sense. i love how they give like tips and they'll be like all right if you want to do this with the controller you go a b c d up and down and yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> what well, was it, like yeah, some weird right? tank driving game that you was like giving the yes. code for <laughs> yes and then they had the tank driving game which i don't think i even got the name it went so quickly or did i oh blast core 64 yes. um which was so they would they would split from these kids so they would select four kids from the audience to play the game that that hockey Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey and then they would jump to other people so you would have the tip of the week which was for Blast Core 64 um, and then we would jump back to talking about how to do offensive so they talked about defensive moves prior to this and then after the tips for Core Blast they talked about offensive tips and then just <laughs> prizes throughout like 
they talked about the top five DVDs that had been released yep. that week. No, that was laser discs. Laser discs. Top five laser, laser discs. discs that had been released that, that week. Asking questions. So they would ask a trivia question and then you had to mail in on a postcard <laughs> what the answer was. Um, it was about the movie. Who starred in the movie Buddy? And I couldn't even a, remember the it movie. It was a buddy. dog. Was it a dog? It was it a was dog, a, right? It was a dog, yeah, I think. So we could God. go back to 97 and see if we could win the prize. And Let's try. We'll, we'll send a postcard. We Just send a postcard. And see to that happens. address and be like, yes. we got it. It's Buddy. Um, <laughs> You're so then- 37 years too late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, to win the prize, so the winner, whoever has the most points or whatever, gets to pick a ping pong, ping pong ball and then gets their prize that's connected with the ping pong ball, right? Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. And then we had Madden 97. Did you guys play Madden 97 as the next game? Um, nope. I don't know if I ever played 97. I did play some Madden games. I did. But... I definitely played some Madden games, but not 97. But I didn't ever have a 64 either, so I missed out on a lot of fun there. See, that's I, I never played Madden 97 either. I was not a fan of football games, but I was super happy to see the one young lady that was playing the video games. I don't yeah, know if that you was caught cool. that. There was one young lady. And as each player was playing, they were actually playing for a home player. So you could put your name in to be a home player. And what that meant that if your player, so the person that was playing in person won, you won whatever they won. Oh, no, right, it would cool. be shipped to you, right? So if you won those passes to the CN Tower for the virtual experience as the main player, the home player would win too. That's it was a cool. really interactive show. Can you imagine if they did that now? It's, they probably couldn't get away with it, but the instant connection of it, like they yeah. were kind of already starting that in 1997 with these mail-in things. Imagine if you could just do it like texting. Like yeah. it would yeah, that have is, crazy, That's wild. Right? And then they went in to do their tips and they showed that cheesy video, Insure. I had never even heard of these people. Insure right. in my arms. Have you guys <laughs> yeah. ever heard of this? This is this is their tenth mega album or whatever <laughs> they said. And I'm like, whoa. And I told I told Tim not a, like not a kid in that audience like that music. Oh. <laughs> and I told no, Tim, right? I'm going, this either is either too Canadian for us or something. We're gonna have to well, ask. Well, it's too Canadian <laughs> for me because I have no idea what that was. Yeah, that was Definitely weird. nothing I had heard of. And then of course. They, they talk about Whoopi Goldberg's new movie that came out, which was The Associate. Um, and then you had a video gift card for that. Like it was just a game of kind of jumping back and forth between tips and focusing on two sports games and focusing on games and movies that were coming out. The band was probably the funniest thing that I saw. Yes. Anyway, so <laughs> that was so um, cheesy and no kid would listen to that music. No, <laughs> right. Not at all. And I, I noticed that they were going so quick that I was having a hard time taking notes because I literally took notes throughout it. And there was one part where I wrote A, B, up, down. Up, down. <laughs> I think I was writing for one of the defensive plays for Madden 97. So if I go back and I play Madden 97 for, you know, Super Nintendo, I am, I am good. Or no, N64, N64, I'm going to be down. I'm going to definitely. You imagine being a kid back there in like 97 and having to record that on the VCR so that you could like (laughs) get those codes because they just said it so fast. You're like, no, I missed it. No. (laughs) And you're like, play it again. Um, now i gotta wait for the rerun several months from yeah, now i forgot to hit record <laughs> why did i record this game um so yeah so very very fun episode i'm glad you guys enjoyed it i'll be pulling ones from different years maybe next time i'll pull something from the early 2000s uh oh, to just see what the difference are and the and the games that come out then but yeah it's uh this was definitely a sports themed episode and i think the biggest things i took away from it was wayne gretzky so canadian yep. mad in 97 <laughs> like i still feel like that was a huge football series of games that came out and the one lone young lady that was playing um i was very happy Happy to see that and I probably was very happy as a young Heather watching that too because I would have been like girl power I feel you <laughs> right so, yeah that that was I am glad that you decided to bring this segment because yeah that was just kind of a fun little nostalgic trip like like I said I've never seen the show but like I going just back to that time I'm like oh yeah Yep, that this brings back memories of that style. and <laughs> Well, it's that's what we call it retro, right? So it's a 24-minute episode. We will leave the link in our podcast notes and on our page if you want to check it out. It's just a fun little show, and if you want to take a walk down memory lane, it's a good time. We are going to jump into our third and final segment, which is going to be basically our first impressions or our review of a video game or something 
along those lines yeah, that we some, have played. Some, yeah, some game we've played. Yeah. Um. So Tim, let you go first with this one because I know you got a couple. So like maybe if you want to do one, then we can bounce around and then you can do the other ones. Yeah, yeah. I I tend to serial game sometimes where I'll be like, oh, I I'll I'll try a bunch of new things and see which ones I actually like, and then some will stick and some won't. Uh, a good example of a game that didn't stick was the <laughs> new Warhammer 40k DACA Squadron, I think it was called. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I like Warhammer 40k and I like orcs, so I'll give this a go. And oh god, it was bad. It was just really bad 3D graphics, just really bad gameplay. I held my attention for all of like three minutes before I, I had to shut it off. So <laughs> yeah i remember you were just like yep this one no no this was bad this is Not bad that. <laughs> but i i have been trying the baldur's gate three the early access for that uh and that's very promising i mean it's it is still an early access so there's a lot of development left to come but uh from what i've experienced of it so far they've got a lot of really promising content it's beautiful and it just keeps looking better every update the the character development's really good it, it's a massive rpg it's it's just just huge <laughs> yeah i i look forward to messing around with that someday because that yeah that game just seems like it's gonna be massive and it's DD, so anything D rpg based i am yes hell yes yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got the right rules foundation so you know everything kind of you can almost see the dice rolling in your head and in fact a lot of times in the game there'll, there'll be a dice rolling on screen so you're like that's you cool. make that connection right there that's awesome i got a 20 yeah. that's why i killed that guy <laughs> nice um heather how about you talk about your game well my game is more of an interactive game so my game that i'm going to talk about is for the ps4 and it's called that's you and it's $14.99 to purchase it is i'll give you the little promo of what it says so the party game all about you <laughs> set off on a journey of discovery with up to five of your friends and family and find out what you really think of each other joining the fun is easy all you need is your phone or your tablet snap a selfie and enjoy tons of funny questions texting drawing and challenges so i played this with my friends during quarantine and you would take a selfie and then it would say things like who is most likely to um you know drink all the booze at a party or for example right and then you have to like vote on who you think it is so if we were playing and we all voted that it was scott Scott. Um, and if Scott got the most votes, then we would all get points. But if there was someone that didn't vote for Scott and he's got the most points, then they wouldn't get a point. And then there's gotcha. ones where you can do selfie photos. So I, I shared some to my Instagram. I'll share some to our page is where you would have to draw the person as something. So let's say we all pulled a card and I got drawn that I had to be drawn as an angel or a judge or Michael Jackson or whatever. And then in, on your phone, each picture goes around and you have 30 seconds to draw on it. So you can put like hair, you can make um, facial expressions on it, you can do whatever you want and then it goes around and then it's shown up on the screen. Nice. So it's a, it's a really great interactive game. So if you're having people over and you're just looking for something to do and you kind of want something that's fun and interactive and gets people talking, it's great. An average game lasts for about 45 minutes. All you need is a charged smartphone and obviously a PlayStation 4. Um, you can easily play three rounds and it go like that because every round is different. So every round will ask you different questions. Every round will give you a chance to do different drawings. It's it's a lot of fun. I really recommend checking it out if you're looking at having people over and, and maybe, you know, it's the first time you're having people over since everything's opened again and maybe people are a little bit awkward. This is a great way to get people laughing and to just get them having fun with each other again. Nice. Yeah. I was like, that, that sounds like a lot of fun, especially like uh because you know if you can play it online? Um, I I think you could. It's just it might be a little more difficult with syncing up to the PlayStation. Oh, that's um, true. Because you do stick it up to the same PlayStation together. Um, oh, right, But right. it, um, I think the best part is you take these different selfies and, like, you, <laughs> like, play with your face and stuff like that. And you can make your selfie however it wants to be. And the game will interact with you, right? It's like... You know, it's like a way cooler version of Nightmares board game. Do you guys remember that game? We oh, yeah. We talked about that one day in The Gatekeeper. Oh, um, yes. You know, I feel like that's where they started with, like, the videotape. And this is where we're at, where the game actually interacts with you and makes comments right. on your selfie and actually makes comments on what you've drawn and stuff like that. It has that, like, technological intelligence and able to do that. So <laughs> we will include a link for it. It is compatible for PS5, but it does need to be upgraded is what I read on the website. But we'll send it. We'll share it to our page. And if if you want to play it i recommend it 
Oh yeah, yeah. Because I that's I like doing those types of games. I did the I did I used to do like the Jackbox Jackbox party packs and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just like Jackbox. I bet you, you and your magic friends would have a really good time with this game. Oh, probably. You I know, if you that. guys wanted a break from I don't know, the Magic the Gathering cards, <laughs> and you wanted to do something else, I would good play luck one round. Our team away from that. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah good point. <laughs> well, if you have the people over, I don't know. When I come up there for your fortieth birthday, hopefully we can play this together because it's Deal. a really really fun game. And who's turning forty? Oh, you just spoiled <laughs> my age. I am. Old. Oh, you're fine. I already gave <laughs> my age. It's not like you're. Come on. <laughs> Look, Grandpa, you can calm yourself. <gasps> Okay. Listen here, young lady. <laughs> the Atari's in the corner. Um, so <laughs> when I come up there, we can play it because it's good for people that don't even really like video games that much. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. I say that, that's one thing I do love is like these types of games bring people in that aren't your typical gamer. No, and um, I think it's great for ice breaking. Yeah. That's a big thing too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say it's it's something fun to do. Yeah. Yeah, and the game that I am bringing to the table, um, I started one and realized. I am not going to have enough time to get into it because uh, it's a lot of uh, time management and like a lot of like economy stuff. So I'm uh, in the future, you will be hearing me talk more about Total War Warhammer 2 because, yeah, that was just overwhelming with not enough time to play it right now. Uh, so I wanted to get something that was a little bit easier that I could just jump right into and have some fun. And well, lucky for me, this, I believe it might have been a development developer sale that was on PlayStation 4. Uh, I don't know if it's going all month or if it's just a weekly sale, but it is a game called Man Eater. Whoa, and here she comes. <laughs> watch, watch out, watch out don't, don't chew you out. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. But yeah. I was, uh, but I think it's normally priced at like $35.99 or something like that, but I bought it for $24.99. Um, and it is basically you are playing the role of a bull shark. Um, you start off early in the game. I'm only probably about four hours into it, but it's I, right off the bat. I got to say it's very colorful and pretty uh, mm -hmm. like and uh, very silly and tongue in cheek. And uh, I hear I haven't seen many yet, but I hear there are lots of Easter egg nods to shark movies and stuff like that in the horror genre. Um, but yeah, you pretty much start the tutorial as this mother bull shark that's going around eating beachgoers and just eating fish and you're just kind of learning the controls while well, she ends up getting captured and killed and uh, while well, she uh, had a baby and the baby shark is now looking to get revenge on the one that hunted Gosh. down and killed your mother. This doesn't sound like any of the Jaws movies. <laughs> no. <laughs> This isn't Jaws the Revenge at all. Oh my goodness. Continue. <laughs> this very interesting plot. I, I actually love the preview you shared. I yes, that... it looks like a lot of fun to play. Like oh, you can it see is... the shark that gets its day. It's yes. got a narrator throughout the whole thing, too. It's got Chris <laughs> Parnell as the narrator. Yeah. Is that yeah, who the... that was? Oh yeah, my gosh, comedian that's is awesome. Chris Parnell. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh but yeah, like you start off as this baby shark, and so you could you can't uh all you can do is like eat guppies and other smaller fish and you get bigger and bigger and bigger as you level up and it has rpg elements which is awesome so you'll go up and level and get stronger swim faster and then it goes really bonkers and you can start upgrading your shark with uh electric teeth metal jaws what? metal armor uh booster jets on it and <laughs> like all sorts of just like crazy That's ridiculous epic. shit uh i got to the point now where i am a teenager as a like teenage size uh, fish, which I believe they, when you're on the uh, menu screen, it actually show it and measured it in meters. And I'm, my shark is two meters long right now. Um, wow. And so it's like able to like, now it's able to like attack humans and eat them. So I've of course go, found some beach goers and just started swallowing them and pissing off the hunters and got into fights with hunters and just swimming around, jumping out of the water, taking them off their boats. And it just, it's dumb, gory, just, silly fun and it's just great playing as a shark because the controls are very intuitive and it's just i'm smiling like a madman as i'm playing it <laughs> it sounds like a fun game when you shared the trailer i actually thought the graphics looked really good like yeah. it just it seemed like a game that was very relaxing to play like it, it didn't seem something that was overstressed 
like stressful and i kind of feel like as a shark and as a nature lover i feel like fuck yeah shark yes <laughs> hey. like it kind of was just really i don't i don't know like i really love that you can play from the animal viewpoint yeah i love that and i love the fact that you get to play starting as a baby and you get to yeah. grow as you're playing and get stronger and be able to do different things because you're bigger That's like awesome. certain areas aren't even uh, unlocked until you become an adult so you can't even like there's like these sewer grates that when you're a teenager you can bash through like but then when you uh when you're a teenager and you get through those and you get to another area there's even thicker metal grates that you're not strong enough to like just slam into and bash through so you gotta wait till you're an adult then you can do that and it's cool and then there's tons of collectibles so there's like license plates you can eat and <laughs> that's um, awesome Love license it. plates yeah that's license cool. plates uh there's like just all these different collectibles that just build your bar up so you can have like more special powers and like get new genetic implementations and like metal armor and all that crazy stuff it's i i will definitely have probably more thoughts on this on our next episode since i'm only probably about maybe four hours in but dear lord this game is just so much fun i can see it eventually getting repetitive but for me right now i'm just having way too much fun with it and don't care that's awesome Uh, Awesome. and tim did you have anything else besides those two games i forget Oh no, there's I've I've played too many ridiculous games right now. Uh, <laughs> but there was this one. Oh man, I forget what it was called now. I should have wrote the name of it down. Uh, I'll find out what it is and you can put the link up online or something for it. But okay. It was a silly little world builder game and it, it was the worst graphics. Uh, <laughs> just just like little dinky pixels bouncing around on the screen, but you had like little villages of orcs, and the, the announcer guy comes on and says, Oh, look at this little village of orcs. And then he's like, let's let's give him a tree, you know, let's let's make a little a river. And he's like, you know, editing the map around and making a pretty little village. Let's give these orcs some cats. So he starts putting a bunch of cats down on there. Oh <laughs> and then the orcs just run out and start killing all the cats and like throwing them in the water and smashing them. And so like he just nukes the entire city. And then that was the trailer for the game. And I'm like, well, I don't I have any idea what just happened, but I'm going to go ahead and try it. And it's just it's just really weird. I'll, I'll make sure we get a link or the trailer at the very least so you all can see that. because it sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like that. Yeah. When you told me about that, I'm like, OK, that, that just sounds like my type of silly game that I would yeah, enjoy then, in a few minutes. I think the name was just called like Super World Builder or something like that. It was, nice. It was silly. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, we'll have to bring games like that in as well. It takes you back to the old school Sims. Remember when Sims came out and it was a big deal oh, because yeah. you could make them have sex and stuff like that? Like oh, that was I, like I, the big I, scandal of Sims, right? Yeah. Like shit got they real. Go woohoo underneath the sheet. Right. Oh. And and now you have phone <laughs> games. I feel like I should bring one of those. Like, okay, yeah. your your husband left you. Now you gotta refix this house. And like they always show the preview <laughs> of the person making the dumbest decisions. Like, okay, the toilet's overflowing, get the vacuum. And I'm like, what on earth is this fucking nonsense on Facebook, right? <laughs> <laughs> where we've come from sims thank you sims now we have ridiculous games that we can play <laughs> yes i do have to say uh I, the, sims probably brought up the demented side in some people too because i used to torment my own sim by uh putting it <laughs> locking him in the bathroom and like building walls and taking away the door so he's just <laughs> stuck in there and he's starving and crying and <laughs> oh my god take man. away the toilet oh. so he can't go to the bathroom is there anything you want to talk about <laughs> yeah right jeez scott went dark with the sims oh, man. i thought i was bad for oregon trail because i would just see how long they could go with no food or no water scott really yeah. like and, you know someone dies of cholera and i'm like you keep going <laughs> <laughs> you got this <laughs> you don't give up settlers well, don't give up <laughs> that reminds me i'll bring this up too but like i don't even remember the name of the game but it was like you played as a surgeon and it was a game around the time of uh, uh oregon trail that, that was, was a the- sturgeon surgeon surgeon like, yeah you're like doing like okay. a surgery and the game was extremely complicated. Like I couldn't even figure out what to do. Was it called Operation Scott? And it oh was board no, game? it was called Life or Death, wasn't it? Yes. Wasn't that the name of it? Life I or remember death. that. It was game. like we found it. They were on our school computers, and you just went oh. around butchering people. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I literally would take the scalpel and I'm like, all right, trying to play the game, and I, like it someone would screw up and I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm like, well, screw you, and I take the scalpel and just go <laughs> all over their body. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an angry teenage child thing to be doing. Oh, it was. Young yeah. Boy, child it thing probably shouldn't thing. have been on our school computers. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, that's really funny. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but yes, this is our very first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a bit uh, 
probably a little bit chaotic the first time as we kind of get our bearings on what exactly we're going to do. Scott's a little bit chaotic. Don't worry, guys. He gets better as we go. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it I is all your fault, Scott. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Scotty. I'm just kidding. But it, but it is true, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. We are going to create a Facebook group for this pay, uh, for this show. Well, by the time this is released, you're, we, you'll see the Facebook group. We will have invited all our friends from the Friday Nightmares podcast, which is our other podcast that Scott and I run as well. Um, and will any of Tim's friends, um, if you're friends oh. with Tim on Facebook, we're probably yeah. going to invite you too. Come um, on down. We're just going to get everyone our page possible so um please share share what games you play watch video in arcade top 10 watch the trailers for these awesome games that scott and tim have talked about play that um that's you it's fun yeah you play with your friends and play man eater and eat some people yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah go go download the Baldur's gate uh pre <laughs> pre-release there That's it's right. uh, it's worth it it's it's a 60 dollar alpha but damn it it's worth it. yes <laughs> and in worst case scenario download one of those facebook games and for goodness sakes do not choose the vacuum to clean up the water and let us know how it goes that's yeah. what we're really we're avoid really the doing. games where you got to input your credit card number yes, too, avoid, we, yes. yes. <laughs> but uh yeah you can uh we are also proud members of the legion podcast network mm -hmm. so please go to uh the pot legion the pot legion dot com or is it legion network dot com I... uh the legion network dot com yep. legion network dot com and uh please go there like subscribe and rate and review if you could for any of the shows on there or all the shows we'd greatly appreciate it but uh yeah we will be having our own feed for this show so yep once a month i uh, hope you guys come back and check us out um so for now until i know our exact closing line i have a closing line for us oh okay. so what we're gonna do is controllers down cards up power off and we'll see you next time Ooh, power off i like that mm -hmm.